August 2017, numbers 35 and 36 here. Um, we'll explain those. So uh, what we have is an isosceles trapezoid where the base is DC and AB. What that's telling us right away uh, is that these are your parallel sides. Okay, that's what the bases mean. Uh, Non-parallel legs, okay, so they're indicating that it is not parallelogram. It is an isosceles trapezoid. Non-parallel legs A, D, and B, C, what that means is those are the congruent ones because it's isosceles, okay? So other information, uh, C, D, E is congruent to D, C, E, these two right here. And uh, this part is telling us that there's a right angle in those. Now, first, we want to prove uh, that those two triangles are congru uh, congruent. Okay, so the one on the, just kind of highlight this. This one in here is congruent to this one here. Okay, after that, we're supposed to prove that that triangle there is isosceles. All right, let's go through this. Um, okay. So I'm looking at eventually getting these two, this angle ADE congruent to BCE, okay? So that's going to be the challenge. Get angle, this is just scrap, okay? Just kind of giving you an idea. <clears throat> so we're going to get angle ADE uh, congruent to angle BCE, and that's going to be using subtraction. Uh, the right angles aren't going to be bad. The sides aren't going to be bad. It's going to then be an angle-angle side uh, triangle congruence for, uh, proof. So let's go through this. Um, I won't do a chart. I'll just do um, kind of one step at a time. All right. So first I'll get the angles. Um, let's see. AE is perpendicular to DE. And BE, perpendicular to CE, uh, because it's given. Uh, our move that we're going to make now is angle AED and angle uh, BEC, our right angles. And that's because perpendicular segments form right angles. Okay. Now we can say they're congruent. That's because all right angles are congruent. All right, now, so that's one pair of angles. I kind of have a checklist here. Let's go after the other pair of angles. Um, okay, first, what I'm going to say is angle, oh, we've got a little bit of work to do here. First, I have to say that ABCD is an isosceles trapezoid. with bases DC and AB and non-parallel legs AD and BC. Okay, because it's given. All right, now we can open up the door to what I was going to do next, and that is going to be angle CD uh, CDA. It's going to be congruent to DCB. And that's because base angles 
bit of an isosceles trapezoid. Are congruent. So next part is what we're going to end up doing, if we go back up for a second, is we're going to end up taking these big angles here, subtracting off the congruent pieces, okay? And then what's left will be uh, these two right here, which is what we needed. Okay, so let's go through that process. Um, let's see, angle CDE is congruent to angle uh, DCE. That's because it's given. So now we'll go through that subtraction. Okay. So now we have angle CDA. I'm going to actually do measure of. Okay. So it's going to be measure of angle CDA minus the, oops, yeah, the measure of angle CDE should then equal the measure of angle BCD minus the measure of angle DCE. Uh, now, so it's really subtraction, uh, property of equality. What's happening is, I'm kind of taking a little bit of a jump here. Um, what's happening is I have congruent parts already, and I'm taking away the same amount from both sides. So that should keep them congruent or equal. Um, you know, somebody might argue that that's not great, but it's close enough. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to simplify this. Okay. By angle subtraction. Okay. So if you look at CDA and CDE, if you subtract them, what's left is angle ADE. So then that equals, and then same thing up on the other one. If you subtract BCD from, or I'm sorry, if you subtract DCE from BCD, you're left with angle BCE. And we'll just call it angle subtraction. All right, now we have two pairs of angles that are congruent. Now we go for the pair of sides, it's pretty easy. Uh, AD is congruent to BC, that's because the legs of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. All right. Ten. We're almost there. Now we have the triangles are congruent. Okay, so we have ADE is congruent to triangle. B, E, C uh, by the angle, angle, side, triangle congruence theorem. Eleven. We're going to have A, D, uh, A, E is congruent to B, E by corresponding parts. Of congruent triangles are congruent. And 12. Triangle AEB is isosceles because it has two congruent sides. Here it is. All right, number 36. So an odd shaped pool here. Um, yeah. So what we're going to look at is the inside of the pool is 16 feet wide. All right, that's consistent. So that's 16 feet all the time. 
38 feet from here to here. Okay, there's this sloped portion that's going to make things a little challenging, All right? Uh, but they kind of drew it out for us, so that was nice. The first thing we want to do is figure out the depth of the deep end, so from here to here. What we'll need is basically how far is it from there to there, okay? Now, these are never drawn to scale, so we can't trust what it looks like. Uh, we can't do anything like that. All right, what we have to be able to do on this is realize we're after this piece right here so that we can add it to the four and a half and get the full depth, okay? So what we're looking at is 16 and a half degrees. Um, oh, we got to figure this out. So let's see, it's 35 feet all the way across. We're going to subtract 9 and then subtract 12 and a half. Uh, that's going to give us 13 and a half. So this distance here is 13 and a half feet. Now, compare to this angle, the side's opposite. That leg is adjacent. This one's the hypotenuse. So, write down the acronym. And opposite adjacent, that's tangent. So we're going to use tangent. Okay, so tangent of 16 and a half degrees should be whatever the opposite over the adjacent side is. Right. So that's point. I'm going to change. I usually change this to a decimal. 296. 2 and some other stuff. To 1 is the same as x over 13 and a half. Then we'll cross multiply and whatever. Whatever that is. Uh, 3.99. It's essentially 4. Okay, so this extra portion is another four feet. So you kind of look at it like this. From here to here is four and a half, and from here to here is about four. So total depth is going to equal approximately, uh, oh, nearest tenth of a foot. Yeah, that's going to be 4.0. So it's still going to be 8.5. Okay, so that takes care of part one of this problem. Volume of the inside of the pool to the nearest foot. Now, this is where it gets a little bit uh, tricky. Uh, technically, we've told you to not round to the end, but it's kind of indicating we can use that. Um, I'm going to calculate it without rounding until the very end, but... You know, there is some variability there because some people might use the rounded answer. So I see three pieces. Um, and again, everybody can do this differently. I'm going to call this the top. Okay. So that top piece is going to be four and a half feet deep by uh, 35 feet across by 16 uh, feet wide, okay? So I'm going to call that the top, volume of the top. Uh, really simple calculation, length times width times height. Okay, so the volume of the top is coming out to 2520. Now let's be careful. Let's remember we took care of the whole top, okay? All right, so the second piece is this uh, triangle piece, triangle the prism. Uh, it's got a width still of 16. Uh, it's got that height of that 3.9988 number. And across, I think we said it was 13 and a half. Now, um, we're just going to call it the triangle piece. A little tricky because technically the base is this right here. Okay? So that is... So when you look at the volume of a prism, the formula is base times height, but that base is the area of the base. Now the base is a triangle, so you have to do one half times base times height. Now that B is different; it's a lower case. Uh, that indicates one of the one of the sides that makes the right angle. So I'm going to call that base the 3.998 number. 
So I got to start out with one half times the base, which is that three nine nine eight eight number, times thirteen and a half for the height of that triangular prism. Now the height of the whole, the the width of it basically, what's consistent all the way through is the sixteen, and we call that the height of the prism. A little strange, um, but that number comes out about that. All right, now it gets more reasonable. Now you have the deep end. Okay, so we're going to call that sine of the deep end. Uh, that's just the bottom portion, which is that 39988 number for the depth. Uh, it's still, let's see, are we there? It's only 12 and a half feet across, though. The deep end's only 12 and a half feet across, and it's still 16 feet wide. Okay. And that's regular length times width times height again. So 16 times 12 and a half uh, times that 39988 number. That comes out 799, 776. Now, if you use rounded answers, these numbers are going to be a little bit different than mine. Uh, I'm not going to take off of that. Hopefully nobody else would too. Uh, because it did indicate that you could round early on. Um, but usually we don't round to the very end. All right, so the total volume all together is going to be all those added up. And that to the nearest full cubic foot is 37.52. Okay. Keep going. So now this is going to be a density portion of this uh, problem. So uh, the next portion is we want to fill this up, let's see, six inches from the top. So we got to take a whole, we got to take a half a foot. So six inches, it's a half a foot off the top. So what's going to happen is we have to understand the top. luckily for us, is the same all the way through. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take off a half a foot off the top, and that is going to be 16 by 35, and then by 0.5. So the volume we're going to take away is going to be length of 35, width of 16, and a height of only a half. So that's at length times width times height again. What are we going to take off the top? Is 280. So we've got to go back up to the top again and say, all right, the water that we're going to fill with, total water, is going to be that 3751.66 number. Take away 280. This is without rounding. Okay, so this is using an answer that has no rounding at all yet. All right, I like to do dimensional analysis with proportions. So right now it says 7.48 gallons to every one cubic foot. That's going to equal, we'll just call it G for gallons. And we don't know how, yes, it's 347, 3,471.66 cubic feet. And then this just tells us when we cross multiply, whether we're going to be multiplying or dividing. All right, so G is going to equal whatever 7.48 times this number is. Okay, the number of gallons is going to be 25,968. Um, that's how many gallons of water. All right. To give us another conversion, this fills 10 and a half gallons every one minute. Okay. So since we have 25,968 gallons, we'll call it Y minutes. Again, the cross multiply. It just tells us whether to multiply or divide. And this tells us to divide. All right, 
right? So 24, 73, 14. This again is not rounded at any step. All right, so since 60 minutes is equal to one hour, what we're going to do is we're going to take our, this is our minutes, we're going to take our minutes, divide by 60 minutes to get 41.219 hours. Okay, now what does it want it to? Nearest full hour. Okay, so it's looking like 41 hours is the nearest full hour. Okay, that's it for those two. Hope that was helpful.